Hello, I bet you can see me. Happy Monday, Bank Holiday Monday. Uh, lovely outside. I won't go out driving because I bet everybody's gone out driving today. So I'll stay in the garden, have a barbie, and uh, just have a few hours painting. Uh, so this one is going to take us uh, two sessions, I think, because it takes at least a couple of hours to do a charcoal one. Oh, I can do it in a, probably an hour. <clears throat> and then by using colour over the top, uh, that's another session, which is a lot looser and freer, and it's entirely up to you how you do it, you see. So people are asking me how we do these portraits, which are basically charcoal and acrylic, yeah, on gesso paper, because we just rub out the charcoal and the acrylic. And we get the white of the paper and then we varnish it. But then after that, we can cover it with colour and glaze it. Yeah, just like an oil painting technique. And so uh, that's the stage we're going to kind of get at today. Not that picture, because we're doing this one. Yeah, that's just looking straight at you. Okay, so it's quite a nice uh, image. Don't know who she is. I'm not painting it for Christmas, I'm just using it as a reference. Might not even recognise her at the end of it. Doesn't matter. Okay, so that's the stage we're aiming for today, more or less. <clears throat> this is the one I put on with it because it's a similar kind of look. Yeah, and the background. So that's got opaque acrylic paint over the top as well as glazes. Lots of splashes again, if you like splashing. Uh, drips, dribbles. And then uh, varnishing, you can varnish as much as you want. There's a bit of pastel in this as well. Uh, a bit of drawing, anything. It's really loosen up your, your creativity. Okay. <clears throat> so that's what we're aiming for by the end of the session on Wednesday, really. Um, it does take a lot of looking at really because there's pictures I've done that I actually go back to and I've decided to do something else to them. So they do kind of evolve over time. But this one worked quite well uh, in the studio. So I left it and varnished it. There's other ones I like that's worked quite well and I've just left them because of the, I do like the spontaneity of it all. Yeah, uh, That's another one. It turned out she, was, she wasn't oriental when I started but she turned into this kind of oriental lady. Uh, there's ones, that's what we did, the one I did at Green Mate, when we did the, the demonstration. I have added a bit more to it, I might do a bit more to that actually. Uh, just glazes of whatever, you know, so I um, quite like it. I might put some colour in the shadows. You can play about it, you can do all sorts of things, you know. Um, it's just getting them looking like human beings first, that's it, and then moving on from the uh, colours important as well, you know, trying to have some complementary colours. I hope you can hear me all right today. My volume's on full. Yeah, Just turn your volume up. Some people say they use the headphones and it sounds better. You can hear it with headphones. Anyway, uh, so that's another one that, you know, I've just got lots and lots of these now. Um, at the end you can spray them if you use any pastel and then varnish them as well. So you can just keep that colour. You can't use a lot of coloured pastel because you can't varnish pastel. You can varnish white or black or a bit of sanguine, but you can't um, varnish lots of colour. Okay, and I'm starting off with lots, a lovely square again with the roller lining paper. That's what I use, but you can use any paper, it doesn't matter. And we give it a coat of acrylic gesso. Okay, and I love the texture on it. Uh, I haven't added anything else. You can put some uh, thick marks in if you like. It's a bit of a um, You know, you can add collage to that when you're doing it. You just have to go with your, too thick with it because it takes a long time to dry. Uh, and it gives you can use it for pastel, oils, acrylics, charcoal, anything you want. Because um, it's a polymer based plastic, so the oil wouldn't soak into the paper or the acrylic or anything else. All right? So it stays on the surface, and that's why we can rub it out. Oh, okay. So I'm going to use start with willow charcoal. 
Yes, not compressed. Don't use compressed. Willow, burnt wood. Yeah, very light. That's what you need. Uh, you can buy boxes of it, or you can buy Winsor and Newton boxes. Uh, these are coats. Um, I don't know if you can get them online or not. Some of the shops are not doing very well online. Okay. Compressed charcoal is actually black pastel, like that. Very black, very dark, harder to rub out. That's why we don't use it. We're also using a bit of white pastel for this stage, uh, which is hard white, uh, um, just to put the lights in, uh, like things like that. Um, I've got some varnish, which is just rum seal, matte, clear, for non oily wood. It's water based. Don't get polyurethane because it goes yellow with age. Uh, it goes on yellow actually. Uh, clear matte varnish, dries matte, and it uh, just protects the picture. And you can keep glazing because you're using uh, plastic over the top as well. Uh, you need some rubbers, a good uh, hard rubber uh, for rubbing out the light bits. Um, we've got a dirt damp cloth. Which, like I said, the gesso is quite uh, quite coarse, so you know it uh, will. It's like sandpaper, and it will rub through the uh, the cloth. So you want a sturdy cloth, not a tissue. All right. Uh, need some water, a jar of water, big brush for glazing, with a couple of um, colours. Probably use some sienna. Uh, it doesn't really matter what we glaze with it initially. I, I do like using sienna and green, so I might do that. Uh, the first thing we need to do, and if you notice this little girl, this young lady, whatever, she's got lots of freckles, yeah? I'm not going to paint all the freckles. Uh, we could create some of them by splattering, but um, it doesn't really matter. I, I love the way she's looking straight at us, and because you're slightly looking down at her, yeah? so she's below your eye level because you've got a curve. You can imagine the curve going around the back of the head. Uh, it is straight line more or less here, except for that eye is slightly higher than this one. So we curve it, you see? So that's the centre of the face, that becomes a curve. I don't know if you can see me doing that. So that's how we work it out. You can't see her ears, you can tell bit by the bottom of her ears as well, because that would be online with the bottom of her nose. So we have got a slight curve and she's looking up. That's why you can see more of the whites of her eyes underneath the iris and the bottom eyelid is white. Okay, we're going to go through all that actually. So I'm going to get to the stage where uh, it's a finished charcoal portrait, really. Yeah? I would I will like I would like to carry on after that, but I think we'll break it up into two sections and finish off on Wednesday. Uh, it makes it easier for you to catch up as well, and you can do this now because you can do it in your own time. So the first thing I'm doing, because it's the charcoal, it's uh, a Brazil image, which means it's black and white. Uh, the tonal values in the face are going to be the majority of the tonal values on my piece of paper. You see? And that's all I'm aiming for. So if you were painting in oils, one way of doing it, because it's an old painting technique, would be to cover the whole canvas with a burnt sienna or burnt umber or something quite dark and then you work from dark to light. So we blend that then so we get rid of all that white uh, gesso. I just want a nice kind of grey tone. You can use um, a bit of tissue like I said. If you use the tissue it does rub quite a bit off but it does give you a nice grey tone about it. So if you don't press on too much, tactile stuff. Yeah. Don't press on too much, you'll have to just rub it off again more or less. That's, uh, and then uh, just give that layer of grey and uh, blend that a bit. Make sure your hands are not greasy as well. Uh, if any grease on your paper it will pick it up. And if it's wet you can create textures by splattering with water. Things like that, but we don't want to do that because we'll have to wait for it to dry and we haven't got time. But you can play about with your underpainting and then paint a portrait over the top. See? So the majority of <coughs> the tones in that surface, on that square surface, a bit grease, is is um, the, the mid-tone values in the face. 
I looked and she's got some really nice kind of negative space behind the head up here. Uh, but the majority of the picture is going to be quite dark in the background. Uh, always kind of knock the bows to get rid of any excess dust. Don't blow it around the room. You don't want to be breathing it in really. Uh, it's not bad, it's only carbon, but uh, if you're doing a pastel, you breathe it in. You, it's not very good for you. Alright, so it's a nice flat surface. Uh, I can't believe this weather though, it's come back, brilliant, I hope it stays for the next seven weeks. Uh, anyway, well charcoal again, I'm just going to draw the image using uh, drawing the egg technique, which some people know about now, if not, you just do it again. Nice big chunk of charcoal, nothing too thin. The thin ones just disappear on your fingers, so you want something nice and chunky. Now, <coughs> my paper's square, that photograph is square. Uh, she's, she's left, it, she's right of centre, and that's the centre of my picture. So if I drew a line down the centre there, her nose is over here. So the egg is actually going off my picture, and it's coming all the way around here. And then I want to get the chin on, it's about there, and it's quite a big egg. You're going to see her neck as well. So I kind of imagine her going off the picture because her hair will be on top of the egg, yeah? She'll be all the way up there. Uh, this is the line, the shape of the egg as it goes away from you. Yeah? And then the hair's always on top of the egg, so that makes it bigger. So if you get that kind of shape, you see, you get a feeling for the shape of an egg. Okay? <coughs> and it's a straight line because the hair is upright, she's not tilting left or right. So I can imagine that's uh, the chin area where it's a point a bit, and then the straight line from the light <coughs> like that. And she's got a slight curve, sorry, because the straight line, I'm an egg, and then I've got a slight curve because her nose is slightly over to one side. Because, um, yeah, because it's. Um, She's moving her head to the left. You can see more of this side of her face, less of the other side of her face, yeah? So that means she must be turning slightly. It's only a slight curve. If we have the center line, it's about here, and then that's the center of the egg, and then that's the curve. It more or less got the curve of an eggshell. You know what I mean? So that's all we need to bother about here. Uh, lots of space here, which is okay. And then uh, because the head's going off the picture, and the eyes are always in the middle, like that. So we kind of imagine where the center line of the egg is going to be. And that's the chin. Yeah? So you want that kind of distance again. So that's fine. But because she's looking slightly down, we have a curve. And if you imagine that going around the back of the egg, you get the C lips. And that's how you get the right eye slightly higher than the left eye because that's where they meet, that's the middle of a, a nose there, so that's the, uh, the bit. So this eye, nice big eyes you got, is slightly lower than this eye, so that's the centre line, can you see? So that and that, so there's a difference in height. Very slight, but there it is. So that, that's the curve of the eyes, that's the socket, middle socket, and then the other socket, where the eyeball fits, yeah. Jackal's so good, she, you can just rub it out. And because she's looking at you, I'm going to put the pupil in the middle, slightly off centre, actually, slightly to the left. Because if, if you look at the picture, you can see more of the half moon here and less on this side. But we can put the iris in, it's the easiest way of doing an eye. And then the top eyelid chops the top of the iris off because it casts a shadow as well, and then it comes down into the shadows there. Don't draw the bottom eyelid, and we'll get rid of the bags anyway. Uh, same with this one, iris, again, pupil in the middle, and then the iris, and then again, you've got the half moon shape there, and that goes into the corner of the eye. So she should be looking slightly towards you, okay? Upwards and towards you. Because you've got the bottom eyelid about here, yeah, and the light catching the bottom eyelid, that's not too bad because we can blend all that because it's in shadow. 
um, and that's the center of the nose so that is going this way so because we've got about halfway between that position and the chin is where your nose is going to be but that's where it sits on the face and the tip of the nose as you can see there is slightly to one side so we're getting the shape like that so I'm just looking at the picture and getting the shape of her nose right look at the length as well you can compare that length to a width of an eye say so if it's too short that width then so there we go so we can have the nose because it's tilting down coming lower down to there um, you can draw a line from the corner of the eye down to where the nose is and if you move it over slightly there just be sure it's rub out a bit so you're not see not be able to see it if I uh, just keep drawing uh, so that is one nostril that's the tip of the nose and that's the other nostril so this is where you will see the distance from that one uh, we'll blend all that in your eyebrows sit on top of the socket anyway like that so that's that shape and that shape like that yeah blend it in <coughs> got this lovely shadow coming from the bottom eyelid there it's the only thing you get there because we're going to add a bit of light um, the nose we can just see a bit of a nostril and the shadow then you get the filter right if you get to the bottom of the egg and you run out of space don't worry about it because that is the shape of a lip and everything then lines up so we don't follow that curve anymore we just line up the bottom lip there which is a, a shadow underneath this is the top lip which is in shadow I got that lovely curve proper line down from my iris it's about here and that's the width of the mouth okay same with that one with the square main of corner so it's not as it's not as wide so that's the shadow of a top lip like that it's just got this kind of look on her face and then the bottom lip is just the shadow it's two muscles one there one there and the shadow underneath so here i can just see the shadow and there's a bit of a chin all right so I'll get your tissue if you've gone to and that is just the chin area you see so that's the chin area this is the eyebrow area and this is the thickness of a it's quite dark in there the thickness of an eyelid top eyelid you can see and the same on this one you can see the top eyelid like that but it's quite dark in there and we can soften that with your finger, with a tissue, with anything you want. So we use the tissue to soften, blend and take off the excess charcoal. So if I look at the face now, it's quite dark here, it goes into the forehead. The forehead is a big flat shape actually, you've got two circles here, just above your eyes. And then it's a big square shape, big oblong like that, sorry. And then you get triangles like that. Uh, depending on how, where the head's turning. So these areas are going to be in shadow, these triangle bits, yeah. On this side, I can just see the dirt under that bottom eyelid and then the shadow and the, the, um, the cheekbone is coming out of the shadows, yeah. Uh, yeah. And it's blending softly into the background. I can see a little bit of a neck, yeah, with a bit of light catching it. I uh, love that strong dark around the iris which i'll probably use um a bit of uh, compressed charcoal there uh, just underneath the eye, bottom eyelid and then this top eyelid overlaps the bottom eyelid and then here we get in the dark area which is the back of the head so that blends into the forehead across the forehead and then to the background and that that and then it comes down the side of a face just related uh, charcoal uh, Coming from here, I've got that lovely angle from the eye to the cheekbone, and then the shadows start there, and then we get this shape of the cheek and the jawline, and where it blends into the mouth. So here, nice and delicate with the fingers, blend everything together. We're going to use a rubber and some uh, tissue just to take the lights off. I look at the shapes are in the face and you'll end up with, you should end up with a, a similarity let's say, to the picture or if you want to make a look young or old 
you know, this, these are the reasons. If you get the shapes right, it will look like a portrait, look like the sitter, all right? So here we've got the neck, we can just about make out, and the shadows over this side. So press on, I've got some lovely negatives there, but I'm just blocking it in first, and then shade, blend all that together. Right there. So I've plenty of time today, don't need to rush too much unless things go wrong. I uh, blend that into my grey area, lovely shapes underneath the eyelid there, you can see? Squint your eyes, don't try and do any freckles whatsoever. So you've got a shadow there, then it goes light again, then it goes dark on this side, yeah? So that's the nose makeup, which I'm going to bring off in a bit and the shadow above the eyelid and then into the background here which blends into those kind of circles uh, side of the forehead and into the background so we want the face to kind of emerge from this lovely shadow in the background okay and that's i mean i could fix that but i couldn't uh, if i make it darker if i wanted to but i don't really want to i just want to keep the shadow there and I can make it darker later, can't I? And keep the gap underneath the bottom eyelid so she's looking up at you slightly. Okay, so we get a bit of tissue, kitchen roll, whatever. Start here and just use it to take off the light areas. Uh, if you look above the eyebrow there, you just get this nice uh, light light which disappears into the shadows. Uh, there's a little bit there as well. Uh -huh. And then we've got the light hitting the top eyelid. Uh, we've got the light in her eyes. They're not too bad, they're not too bad. I'm going to use um, a bit of uh, the rubber to just bring off the light on the bottom eyelid. So that area is the cheek. It blends into the side of her nose. Uh, you've got a bit of light on the nostril. Like that. Then the tip of her nose, which is to one side, naturally. Which comes from there, you get a kind of ski jump. It's always a little bit darker in between the eyes at the top of the nose. Uh, and then where the bridge is, it goes a bit lighter. And then you get the light catching there. So here, we've got this light on the cheek, which is going around um, the nostrils. Yeah. Uh, there's a lovely shadow under there, so we'll just leave that for now. Uh, do the filter a bit. And then the top of the top lip is quite nice and light, yeah? Uh, soften the nostril. Because we can't work too fussy, you you just got these lovely kind of shapes that blend into other shapes, and that's what we're looking for. At the side of the mouth there, you've got two nice light areas, like that. Uh, it just brings out the corners of the bottom lip. And the bottom lip has a, sh has a light in the middle, like that. And then the chin, there's not much there, and that's about it for the chin as it comes up here and disappears. Yeah, so, like that. bit on the neck if you want to put the neck in, and a bit here. Okay, and um, top of the eyebrow on that side, inside the eyelid, which I'm going to have to do with the rubber. So, this is a rubber, naturally, top eyelid. Bit more light there. Come into the corners of the eye, very very light, and it comes round and then it goes to the bottom eyelid, like that, which is a lot of light catching there. If you take the light off the top of the eye, iris, and then take the light off underneath the pupil, there, because that will give you the colour of the eye. Yeah? So you're getting the glassiness like that. Highlight on top, colour of the eye underneath. And then we've got the light in the middle of your eyeball because it's a circle, isn't it? And this is the half moon shape on that side. So there's more on this side, less on the other. And that goes up into uh, the top eyelid, yeah? And it's quite a big area then. Uh, we can draw that in later. Again, we've got the bridge of the nose, it blends into that. Um, if you use the side of your rubber, it creates, it's like a, it's like using a big brush and you're just creating these shapes like that. You can see. And then the shape of a, a cheekbone, which is a nice highlight, just blending off into the back of the head. 
She's got a lovely light here, which is on the tip of her nose like that. And then it goes up here, blends into the rest of the nose. So you just take the light out and just blend it with your finger, especially on the tip, like that. Blend it a little bit. Uh, you can just see a bit there. And then this nostril on the side of her nose is not that dark now, as you notice. So we I kind of take that off as it comes around and then down the nose like that. Look at that. So this side's not as light, not as dark as it as it looks. So that is the shadow going into her. So this one then I get the top eyelid. Again it's a little bit of light catching the top eyelid. The reflection in her eye. Uh, the iris, take the light off the bottom and then the bottom eyelid. So that's going to come into the corner of her eye and then this one's going to come down to meet it, isn't it? So you get the top eyelid, the corner of the eye. So that's where you're getting this kind of curve, slight curve there. Yeah. Don't worry, it's not spot on at this stage because you've got plenty of time to move it. That comes out of the shadow there and then we've got this highlight at the top of the eye. Okay, uh, the half moon shape again here. Yeah underneath the eye and goes into that side of the eyeball which is not as light okay so here we've got the shape like that and then we get the filtrum there which is a U shape like that and it creates the shape of a lip the top lip cupid's bow then the side of her nostrils are quite light inside with the cheeks and the shadows are, because you've got a shadow like under the nose, uh, that corner of the mouth disappears and then we get a little bit of light just on that muscle corner of the mouth like that, to give that softness, yeah. Um, bottom lip, that muscle, and that muscle catching the light just a little bit. Uh, just in here, again, blend it. Same over there. Take the light off there and blend it. Keep the chin kind of uh, angular, square. Yeah, don't have it curvy. You don't want it curvy. And then the nostril. So you've got the light on this side of the nostril, underneath the eye there. So that's the the eye light there, and then the cheekbone. Okay. So that's about just enough that I need to carry on. You get, we're going to get reflected lights in the top, uh, in the middle muscle in the top lip, and we're going to add some dark areas now. So I'm going to take out some of that background. Again, use a bit of tissue. If you're working along, uh, don't try and keep up. But if you want to keep up, that's fine. Uh, the more you do it, the better you get, the quicker you'll get. Uh, it's all about growing skills. Uh, the light here and there's a light there as well which is quite interesting you know you, she has it's actually like the hair um, you can just see the creases or the light in between uh, the strands of hair a little bit lighter on that side you know just adds a bit of interest as well uh, we don't have to do everything we're going to change we're going to splatter it and what have you well People who like splattering. We don't want a kind of dirt line under the chin, although it is on the picture, but we do want some light hitting the neck just a little bit uh, so we can see you know, a bit of a neck and uh, you could have hair or whatever. Anyway, I'm going to add some compressed charcoal or black pastel. All right. But when you use black pasta, you have to make sure you spray it later because we don't want it to. And it's heavy. Black pasta, it's uh, compressed and it's heavier than your willow. Alright, well, with this, I can put the eye pupil in and I can put the iris, the ring around the iris because it's a lovely dark shape. And that's going to make her eyes stand out a bit more where the tear duct is uh, the bottom eye is a little bit of a line there that's all and then this disappears around the eye uh, this is the width of the top eyelid you see 
It goes a little bit darker there, but don't block anything in, just blend that in to the eye. And same with this one, pupil, top eyelid, like that. Keep the eyes lined up, or else she'll end up looking at her nose and scanning. So you want them lined up, same distance. Yeah, and that comes down here, it goes in a little bit of light just inside the iris. And down here we're getting, it's going a little bit darker there, but uh, you just do that with your finger. Uh, that's all you need. Here again, a bit of dirt just underneath. The bottom eyelid, yeah, and then the ring around the iris, this way around there, for you. and then the other side of a of a eyelid which disappears, and this is the bit where you can see the thickness of her eyelid again. So because we dropped the line down from the corner of the mouth, uh, when you get to the corners of the mouth, it's always quite dark there, where it meets the top lip, yeah, uh -huh. uh, the same on this side, but because it's going around the corner. It's less, it's nearer, and then where the muscle meets in the middle, you're going to get a dark line, like that. and then the shape underneath the bottom eye, uh, bottom lip gives you a nice dark area. A um, little bit of dark here for the eyebrow, uh, nothing too spectacular. We can use some of this to kind of bring out that shadow. See that little bit of an area there gives you a space at the back of the head. Uh, I'm going to blend the cheek in so it disappears into the background and I don't want to kind of, uh, we can have a little bit of a dark area, not too much. And the nostrils, so where we get the shape of a nostril, uh, all we can see is a dark area there and then we got the shape of this nostril which comes around and then you get a dark area there. Um, nice and sh shadowy in the middle where it makes the filter and that's about it, yeah, sorted, nearly finished. Um, nothing too dark, uh, if you're still going too dark, uh, you're going to, when you come to glaze it, it's going to disappear. So I want her looking at us and she's looking at me anyway. If she's looking at me, she must be looking at you, so put her on the wall, she'll look at everybody. Just a little bit of light here to hint at the neck and a bit of light there to hint at the uh, back of her head or the hair, uh, whatever. Off centre, very nice, love it. Okay, I know you're saying yes. Um, if anything, the nose is, well, the top lip's a bit higher than it should be, but uh, that's okay, because it doesn't look out of place. <coughs> A lot of the time, things you can change things all the time. The thing is, once you've got the position of things, uh, features, it's harder to d change them uh, the more you get into the picture, okay? So you're just kind of making these little adjustments so it, it, uh, it's a different change. So it don't be over. All right, now I'm going to spray it with some air spray because we've got some uh, lovely... Silicon, uh, <laughs> could be any hairspray like that. We use hairspray to fix uh, the charcoal. And if you use pet fixative, it's waterproof, usually. So that means it, your water's going to run off. Um, we don't want it to run off. I want it to, I want it to destroy the charcoal slightly, okay? So the first thing we spray is the eyes. Uh, get right up to it. Like that. Don't make it wet through, but just make sure you get everything. And you're coughing your head off. And it's lovely and smells lovely now. Okay. Big air freshener. We need that to dry a little bit. Um, sometimes when you do that in your glaze, you will kind of create other accidents. And I have done that a few times. It's quite interesting, but a lot of the time you just take your picture off. But um, you can actually spray an area and then glaze it and it reacts with the water, yeah? So there's all sorts you can do as you're painting the picture. I am drying it, in my hair dryer. Got the hair cut, by the way, by me. <coughs> it's terrible.
Okay. See, the lights of your eyes are not white, really. They're kind of mid-tone value. Uh, you, it's just the ring around the iris that gives it that shadow on your top eyelid. So if I do that and the uh, compressed charcoal doesn't come off, then it should be okay to glaze. All right? So if it does come off, then uh, you've got a problem. Uh, you've got to wash it all off, so you'll have to be careful. Big brush, this is a big brush, yeah? The bigger the brush, the better. Depends how big you're painting, actually. But if you're painting that size, one big brush can cover it all. And I've got some burnt sienna, which I'm going to mix. Um, the problem with sienna, it's blocking up. A uh, bit, bit of sienna in a pot, in a palette, deep well palette, so we can add a lot of water. And a bit of green, and I'm going to do the top, or this side I might do green, and that side sienna, is that? You will lose quite a bit of this, so don't worry too much. Um, Cloths, yeah, lots of water, so pick your water up with the brush, add to your sienna. Dry your brush, a bit of water, add it to your green. You don't need to mix that too much yet, because you'll end up with uh, sienna and green mixed here. Uh, we want it to mix on on the paper, actually. Yeah. So take, get your brush and kind of blend it, or glaze it all the way down. Like that. And this just knocks your picture back. Is it still there? Just looking through a haze of the green on this side and the hair and let it run, run and drip if you want to yeah. bit over there as well oh no I'll say if it runs a lot like that um, we do want some runs I'm going to dry my brush a bit and drag it away from the features like that because I don't want too much, uh, too many drips in her face really. Oh, if you've got another brush, which is ideal, I do. Um, a dry brush, you can use a dry soft brush and that'll do the same thing. You just drag it away. Uh, some of them I might leave because I want some of these drips in her hair. Uh, some interesting shapes that the water creates. This is why we use um, hairspray and not fixative because I do want it to kind of run a little bit. I want the water to destroy it a little bit. Okay, uh, it might be a bit shiny on the picture, um, so I'm just I'll leave that area, blend it. We can speed it up with the hairdryer. Okay, I'll stand back. Got quite a bit of light on it because I've got a lamp. Yeah, it's it's too shiny on the TV, on the video, even if I set it up a bit. I think. Anyway, set it up a bit. It's still a bit shiny. Okay, <coughs> and I'll dry it so that'll lose the shine. So. Hair dryer again. Just make sure.
Still looking nice. Still shiny. Okay, I'm just going to pull up uh, just at the top. This is why you need some good masking tape as well, because it holds your uh, it holds the paper. So yeah, I've got a big kind of bubble here where it's uh, quite wet. So as long as you dry your tape a bit, pull it off, pull it up, and then pull up from the centre. You'll get rid of your uh, the big blob in the middle, which um, it will dry flat anyway, but it just helps you while you're working on it. Okay, so I get rid of the blob and then just stick the tape back down. All right, so we get that nice shape. Okay, so that's um, we've got some nice textures in there, quite happy with it. She is still looking at me, it's turning to kind of uh, 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 what would you say, Rembrandt desk type of old painting um, so I'm going to do the same thing now with a damp cloth because I can't use the rubber anymore because it won't lift off I don't think so because it's glazed anyway it won't so if I'm looking at the forehead as you start to dampen it's only damp it's not ringing wet okay you don't want it ringing wet it could be dripping everywhere as I'm looking at the forehead I'm just gonna use very kind of very soft um, brushing technique to start to remove some of this toner value. This is where we can really go to town with these kind of blends in the, in the skin and the tones in the face because if you look at the face it's not a lot, not a lot of uh, change in tone really apart from where i say where the eyebrow is there yeah so i'll just show you that a little bit again so we can bring that out now top of our eyelid uh little things like that so that blends around the corner into the shadows uh we're going to keep the shadows and then slowly removing uh the light from the forehead like i said it's quite flat in the middle it goes a little bit stronger over the eyebrows so the sweat runs, doesn't run into your eyes. Uh, it's a little bit darker in between the eyes here. You've got that kind of V shape. Okay. So you've got a, like, a V shape there. Um, and as you get to the bridge of the nose, which is about here, it's a little bit dark, a bit lighter, so, And that blends into the rest of the nose. Look at the shapes in the nose. You know? You've got these really nice areas where the light's catching the tip. Uh, the corner, the nostril, yeah, underneath slightly, different tone, reflected lights as well, uh, the side of the nose here which is not too light, um, but it's darker than the highlight, yeah, so the highlight, the bony parts of your face, cartilage, things like that, inside that eye where the tear duct sits in there, again, if you start to build out the light, I can take the light off the top of her eye and then again I can take the, the light around the bottom of the pupil and again we can use your nail, get your nails stuck in, in the cloth, if you don't like using your good nails use a, a tissue, use a, an old brush that you can put in uh, and then take the light off the uh, bottom eyelid uh, and disappears into uh, eyeball now you've got inside there where the tear duct is, you've got a little bit of light, sparkly light, and then that blends into the bottom eyelid. The, uh, okay, nice and soft. Uh, it should start to appear. Like I said, like, there's no way I'm going to try and do um, effectiveness at this stage. I might hint at them later when we do a bit of splattering. You can make the face kind of slightly come out of the picture, which is what I want to do actually. I want it to kind of appear from all this dark background, you know. As you're coming down to the bottom of the face, it goes lighter in the nostril, uh, into the cheek. Uh, we get to the filtrum. Yeah, I 
which is that U shape just under her nose. Which again is going around the corner, so it's not as uh, light on this side. Uh, we can just take that down a little bit, make, a, make that area a little bit longer. You see? Uh, <coughs> filter them like a V shape there. Uh, and then the top of the top lip is quite light. Uh, that brings out the top lip and then it blends into the rest of the cheek. You see? Uh, and there we get these little shapes around the mouth. If you look at the mouth, it's because it's made up of these muscles and tones, you know, um, you want that softness to evolve slowly. So you don't want it to do it. If I go too dark, I can always, if I go too light, sorry, I can always add a bit more pastel or charcoal. So <coughs> and then coming down to bottom lip, I get a shape there. And then here I get the light on the bottom lip. Both muscles, you see? And then a bit in the corner there. And that blends into the rest. There's little shapes uh, around things. And then this comes down to a chin. And you get the dimple in the middle. Uh -huh. And that blends into the rest of the chin. Okay, so it's quite easy. Honest, it's easy. Just keep looking at the tones and bringing out the little bits of light. You think you've gone a bit light sometime, and then when you realise, when you look at the rest of the picture, you haven't got light at all, so don't worry about it too much. Again, the lights in her eyes, we can use some compressed uh, white pastel for that, so. And then the bottom of her iris, or the eyeball, quite a lot of light there. So same over here, I've not touched this side yet. Lovely light, top of her eye, bottom of the iris, where the colour's going to be. Yeah? Um, the grey, the half moon sh shapes in the uh, eyeball. Uh -huh. Again, keep it lighter in the middle and then a bit darker as it goes around the corner. You know, you can blend that uh, a little bit off the top eyelid. There. There anyway. I'm using this cloth to get into the corner of her eye, which is down there. And again, that little sparkle in where the tear duct is. And then they um, keep finding a clean place on your cloth if possible. And then the curve of a bottom eyelid, because it goes around the eyeball. And we do have that little bit of light underneath the iris. Uh, see, so she's looking up. I'll just take a bit more light here as well. So we can put colour in there and we can darken those again. Um, corners of the eye, it always goes a little bit lighter here and then it, goes, it blends into the rest of the face. So we've got a subtle change in tone there into the nose, okay? Um, and that's the bottom eyelid just there. The beauty of this technique is well, it's not going to go anywhere once you've sprayed it. She'll be there forever. You can do anything over the top. So this is the cheekbone. Uh, that's underneath the bottom eyelid, which is soft. Yeah. You don't have to have it so harsh. You can soften it. Uh, uh, again, take more off the nose. Make it stand out. From the face again, we could straighten up the top lip because it's a bit, move it a bit over, and then we can straighten up the filter on there. It blends into the rest of your uh, uh, the shape under the nose. Uh -huh. Okay, uh, we get a nice area. Oh, it's, there's a lot of light there, and then the. Um, said the uh, bridge of a nose. Well, we get this really nice softness in skin tone that's what I'm after and that will blend into the cheekbone and that will go into the background. Okay yeah here yeah. <laughs> again we can actually if you want to do a bit of spotting technique to create the shapes around the head if you want entirely up to you. Yeah. Uh, if you get them in the face you're going to get thumbs in the face so just be aware. Um, 
Right, I'm rub out this little bit of light in the background here. This is the negative space at the back of the head. So it is a bit green in there. And then I get shape here as well. That's where I've splashed the water, see? Give me some texture. Uh, that's the shape of my, uh, my brush, so when I put it on, I can play about with it, we can make it bigger, I can make it smaller, you can do what you want, yeah? Turn into the Mona Lisa. Ah, got the shape, yeah, uh, a little bit darker and lighter there. All right, um, try and get some kind of direction there. Look at that, it's lovely. And we can bring out the chain a little bit more and blend it in to the bit under the bottom lip. Lovely softness in the bottom lip. Yep, so the thing, uh, reflected light in the top lip, the middle muscle will get lovely reflections. Alright, right. <coughs> I'm going to leave that because I quite like that. The reason we do this kind of glaze as well is to create a happy accident. Yeah? It's like anything. If you can create accidents and use them as part of your picture, it makes it a little bit more uh, interesting and appealing. Yeah? It's uh, aesthetically pleasing. Uh, lovely light there behind in the back of her nose. Aesthetically pleasing. And that blends into uh, the rest of the top lip. Squint! Take your glasses off. I can't. I need my glasses to see the picture now. Never used to. Um, and that is about it, really. It's quality. Uh, I would like to carry on. I could use, put a glaze, the first glaze on it. I could varnish it. But I'm going to go in with my uh, compressed charcoal first and a bit of white pastel. Um, compressed, again, jet black. Be careful when you go for compressed charcoal if you buy it in a box. Some compressed black charcoals are not black, they're grey. Uh, so you want to make sure it's black and not grey, okay? That eye then should really stand out, uh, the bottom eye a bit. Yeah. Uh, the nostril again underneath there, and there, and a bit of a dirt bit here, yeah. blend that in. Okay, same with this eye, pupil, iris, hang around the eyes, top eyelid, like that. Um, shadow, because you always get a shadow from the top eyelid. And that will blend into the eyeball uh -huh. and a bit on the bottom eyelid. Get a thin slither of skin that catches the light, don't we? Uh, we can use a little bit in the, in the eyebrow, just there. Right. And then again, we want the corners of the mouth to go a bit really dark there and there, and then the middle muscle of the top lip, and then you can put a little bit under the bottom lip. Okay, and she's just kind of appearing from the back. If you want to just bring out the side of her face, you can. Uh, this side, I might add some of her hair, like that, which is just coming out from the picture. Just creates a bit of interest. That's a same up here. I've still got quite a bit of green there. Mm -hmm. We want this to just slightly blend into the top lip. So don't draw a line from one corner of the mouth to the other. You want it to be nice and soft, like the Mona Lisa smile. All right. uh, you can bring out the chin a little bit like that. and some more of her hair or whatever. Right. Some of these splashes make some interesting kind of shapes. Like that. You want to bring them out, put it on and blend it. Like that. Okay. If you're not happy with it, go bit out. Yeah. And I'll use some white pastel. Just while I'm here, we'll give her some green eyes, actually. Uh, 
So you put the green on and that, and then just take it off again because you want it to be transparent. Lovely, unnatural green eyes. <laughs> if you saw these on Sunday, it'd be okay. Um, so you want to see through it, see, so you don't want it to be too thick. So you put it on and take it off. Uh, you can always paint it over there if you don't like it after. Right. Bring around the iris. Then we get the white pastel. Stand by. <coughs> Look at the weather. Beautiful. Uh, I'm just going to soften this bit here where the chin is. And where the sick corners of the mouth there. And up. And here. You start to see things like this when you stand back so that's why you need to kind of stand back if you're over the top of your picture all the time you probably wouldn't see these little mistakes well not mistakes but the kind of changes in tone that don't look right so you can stand back and see it from a distance and um, even though it's not on the picture you know because you might just be slightly out in one position or whatever doesn't matter Anyway, white pastel, I've got lovely white in the top of her eye, which is the and there. It's these little reflections. I've got a lovely speck of white where the tear ducts are, in there and there. And where the light's catching the in inside of the tear duct, uh, which blends into this bit. You can rub out more there. Uh, and then we're going into uh, the bottom eyelid where the light's catching the bottom eyelid like that. Uh, same on this side, don't try and paint the eyelashes. You can always do it later. Uh, this, if you look at the picture, there's an area there where it's more or less pure white. So we can leave that where the light's catching it. Then we get the filtrum. Again, it's usually pretty, pretty light in there. Uh, Put it on, take it off, blend it up. What you don't do is cover the face because you're going to cover up all that lovely blending. So here, just where you put the bottom lip in, right? If you want to put the background in, in this area, sometimes it's nice to have a contrast behind the head, can you see? This is a negative space. Uh, you don't have to do it all over, you can just leave that. Uh, just to make it look like there's something at the back of it. You can do the same here if you want to blend that in. This gives you an interesting uh, shape, isn't it? Put it on, take it off, blend it, soften it. All right. Yeah, so that's that nice corner of the mouth, soft area. And then blend into the cheek. Beautiful. <coughs> I'm going to varnish it and then. What time is it? Yeah, that's about enough actually. I'm going to varnish it and then the next, on the next section with the same painting, I'm going to start adding more colours. Okay. Just make sure uh, before you varnish it that you've got everything right. It's like you want the contrast right in the eyes. Like that, yeah. Because of the square format, the eyes and the face becomes, uh, you know, the focal point. So the eyes are the focal point in your picture. And like I said, I want the head to just disappear into the background. Okay, I'm quite happy with some of these splashes. If I just leave them, uh, again, you've got the blend of a kind of a neck here. She could be wearing things, doesn't matter. As well as using pastel, I can just use the, once I've varnished it, I won't be able to rub out. Yeah? So I just have to be a little bit careful. So, negative space, if you want to around the side of the head and they can blend into anything. Okay. 
these are what I like doing. I mean, we do do watercolours and things like that, but I get a bit bored with watercolours. I get a bit bored with everything. But I do like doing this and then playing about with them, so we can start to uh, bring out more light in the forehead, you can see, and just blend it slowly. So you're getting the peaks and troughs of the, the gesso is giving you the transparent colour in her eyes, in her, in, her, in her features. So that's what we're after, that's all we're doing. That's all you're seeing. It's the light travelling through, hitting the white paper and the colour and bouncing back. And you can't beat it, because you can't get anything right to the transparency. Which is one of the reasons I do like watercolour. Okay, I'm going to leave that. When you put, um, oh, what's it? Oh, I was going to burnish it, didn't I? Yeah, I'm going to leave that spread ready for varnishing, I think. A bit more compressed. Every time you use the compressed, you need to spray it with a hairspray. Oh, yeah. Stand back, make sure she's looking at you, kid. Close her mouth. Um, no, I'm better leaving it actually. I won't vanish it today. Yeah, I will. Because some people are thinking, oh, I said I'm going to vanish it. Okay, I just want to get the reflection on the top lip just to give you that lovely softness. Yeah. Side of the lip. And a little bit darker. In the middle. Okay. A little bit of dark there. I'm just going to give it a bit softer. Especially the eyes, anywhere where you put pastel. It's going to go lighter anyway, but we can use paint lighter. And you need that to dry. Let me burnish you. You should be ready for Wednesday. Said if you do, if you spray it and then varnish it, you won't be able to do this what I'm doing now. So you make sure you've got most of the lights out that you want. Because if you start using opaque, you're just going to cover up the, the hard work. Okay? So I get some water based varnish, clean brush. Because it's water based, it will also destroy your pictures, so be careful. Yeah, we don't like PVA glue. So pick it up, start with the eyes first, then go over any other white areas. Uh -huh. You don't want to keep rubbing. Um, and this has got quite a bit of dark on, so I'm going to glaze all the uh, rest the back. The dark bits are harder to varnish because they don't soak up the pigment, the uh, varnish. And it will soften it. Yeah. Everything you've made underneath is going to stay there. Don't worry about it. You might even add a few things like a few more drips and runs and shapes. It's all part of the process. Okay. And the crime. This is why they change as you do them. 
because it can only go so far with the with the little charcoal and put that in compressed. It can only go so dark. Alright. Got a bit of a light a bit there. So uh, this light's just going. Put your brush in water because it's quick dry varnish and you're rubbing it. <laughs> and then um, dry it off. <coughs> Again. Probably gone shiny again because of the light through the window. Yeah, it's gone shiny. It's a matte shine. Let me tape off because I'll tape it down again uh, on Wednesday in order to flat. So I'll take the tape off. I'll learn. So when you varnish it, it knocks it back again, yeah? and then we bring it out again. So that's all we're doing, knocking it back, bringing it out, and have a cup of tea, cup of tea time. Just, uh, so that's a bit of light on that. You can do what you want now, because it's dry, quick dry varnish, can you see? So we're going to add colour to that by glazing on Wednesday and changing it unless you want to leave it as it is and do another one. Okay then, okay. Okie doke, I've got to say. Okie doke. So um, have a go to get to that stage and then we'll create something different on, uh, not different, we'll add to this and create something more uh, with this kind of technique over the top. With paint. Oh, yeah. Wonderful. Thanks for watching. And see you Wednesday. Can't see a thing when we last on. Okay, bye. I'm going in the sun now. Have a good uh, have a good week up to Wednesday. Well have a good week. Mm. <coughs> bye.